I believe we have Fiore, myself, and I believe that's Tim steering wheel that I'm looking at. Is that correct? I'm, I'm on. Yeah, I'm on. Lindsay's on too. I'm on. Yes. Who? The four of us. Lindsay. Okay. Yes, Lindsay. Okay. Um, for, first of all, thank you, and I apologize. I'm going to try. If somebody has a comment, try to pull up. The, I don't. For some reason, I don't have. Is anybody yeah, was sent on Thursday, I believe. Yeah, I'm just having. Okay. I don't know what it is for me not having. Corn. Liz, can you send uh, Maureen the utilization form? Did you send that to her already? Uh, nope. I can do it right now. Thank you. If somebody has the agenda, please feel free to just start it, get us started with uh, what I believe we have scheduled. I've got two, two computers and a phone trying to figure out how to get things going. Hey, State, I don't care about your dad. Well, um, this is Lindsay. The first item on the agenda was to ex the minutes from the October 19th meeting. Thank you. Um, uh, may I, uh, if there aren't any questions, please may I entertain a motion to accept the minutes from the previous meeting? So moved. Motion made. Uh, second. Motion has been moved and second. Hearing no questions, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Lindsay, second item. The second item, um, this falls under discussion of the REO. I'll just, it's three quick things, so I'll just go over all three. Okay, um, thank you. Review of year-to-date projects. The second is update the Homer DeBerry School Project, update of the Homer DeBerry School Project. And then the third is the schedule for the upcoming year. And that's, those are the last things before public speak out. Okay. All uh, we have right now is uh, Homer DeBerry um, for the REO. Only project we have ongoing is Homer DeBerry. Correct. De we, we, we've had uh, smaller boiler projects for actually one school, um, Frederick Harris, um, and that will be wrapping up. But that was a, uh, I think, just over the threshold uh, project um, of in installation of a boiler at Frederick Herrick School. Um, outside of that, this is our only REO project ongoing right now. And, and somebody would like to speak. Well, we can still, let's just jump in with the Homer Street. Um, can we get an update on what status of uh, the Homer Deep area is right now? Yeah. Yes. Uh, go ahead, Liz. No, no, no. I know you You have limited <laughs> time, so you go first. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. So, so for uh, minorities, we're at 26.3%. Uh, Women, we're at 9.5%. Uh, vets, 9.6%. Springfield residents, 32.49, uh, 32.5%. Um, so uh, uh, Fontaine, uh, uh, Liz, they're doing a, a great job so far uh, on the project. Um, we've recently talked to uh, Grzeszczyk. I, I, I know I mess that name up all the time. Uh, Grzeszczyk Plumbing um, and a, uh, Adams Plumbing. Um, they were, uh, uh, didn't uh, come in great, uh, Grisheshi did. So we basically had some uh, meetings before they fully ramp up. They're well aware of what they need to do. Um, and we're going to stay on top of them as far as that's concerned. Um, Adams Plumbing, uh, the same. Um, they haven't hit the site yet. They will be ramping up. Uh, later on in the winter time, but we've had uh, a preliminary discussions, pre-con discussions about their labor force, how it's going to be constructed and how they're going to meet their numbers. Um, Liz has been in contact with uh, both subs to uh, uh, get them uh, ready and make sure that um, they're serious about meeting their numbers. Um, Norgate, um, again, uh, we're uh, uh, having an issue with Norgate and their residents. Um, so 
outside of their residence. Um, they're doing okay besides vets, but we really need Norgate to get on the ball as far as residency. This was an issue with them on the uh, uh, Brightwood Lincoln build. It's becoming an issue with them on the DeBerry Homer build, and we need to get them uh, in line and we need to uh, make sure that they're doing the best uh, possible maximum efforts to reach out to get the residents uh, uh, on the site. Yes, um, yeah, thank you uh, Chay, for that um, update. We, um, and just to add a little bit more information for everyone who came um, under the requirements, which were Wayne Griffin, uh, Graseshi, Norgate, um, everybody got a non-compliance letter. Um, and so basically we asked them to review the maximum efforts form and let us know what, you know, what actions uh, they have taken or they're planning on taking. Um, the only one that we've received so, back so far um, has been from Norgate uh, telling us that they have hired a veteran. So we'll keep an eye on those numbers because as of when this last report was submitted, they were at 1.6%, which is, and then, um, yeah, so the, which is pretty low in, at 6.2% for uh, residents. So I actually have a call tomorrow with Grazeshi. Uh, so hopefully, you know, we'll get um, a little bit more information there. But also just right before we started this meeting, I got a um, an email from Jeff Napolitano from Community Work because uh, I'd sent him the uh, job description that Fazeshi had shared with us. Um, and it looks like they already have a candidate who's tried to contact them. So I'll, I'm going to make sure that by close of business tomorrow um, that that connection has been made because it's a woman of color um, and a resident and they could certainly use that. So, um, so that's it. And we'll just stop for questions. <laughs> That, that's great. I just want to piggyback a little bit um, off of the uh, Wayne Griffin, uh, Wayne J. Griffin Electric. They also said that they'll be ramping up um, this winter um, and that they have their work crew set and that they're ready to meet the numbers. And they met the numbers on Brightwood Lincoln and they ramped up when they said they were in Brightwood Lincoln as well. So we have every faith and confidence that they will be doing uh, the same thing. Um, the other uh, part is, uh, Fior, uh, Norgate had referenced that you would be helping them uh, reach their resident quota. Um, is that is that what's going on? So right now, to date, I'm the one that pushed to, actually they were both apprentices, minorities, uh, apprentices are relevant, but I'm just saying they were basically green apprentices and he did put them on as residents slash uh, minorities um, which are two criteria great the problem is one kid I think they got him out actually on the iron last week uh, actually it was two weeks ago and I think he had sticker shock and literally walked off the job at lunchtime never came back so he has not returned any of my calls uh, I offered him a mess position on that job putting the mesh in they started that back up today the company that was there before uh and he has still not returned my phone call so i don't know if i actually drive to his house and find out what's going on uh long story short i called the apprentice program to see if he's even attending classes they're supposed to get back to me but that is about the only uh conversation was me telling them i had two people i have told them before there were others i'd really have to go over to look over the list today but as of date um, he really hasn't asked me for any residents. So sorry, Mark, but I told him, you know, I, I send the messages when I have people available. Um, they have ramped over there, ramped up over there, but he has not really asked me for uh, any residents. I'll be honest with you, I'll have to look at my list right now. If he were to call me tomorrow, I don't know if I have one or not, but he, um, he isn't overly jumping up and down trying to take people from me, let's put it that way. Gotcha. That that would be great if you could, because this has been their issue on Brightwood Linking, and this is yep. becoming their issue on uh, the Barry Homer. Yep. yep. I yep. took uh, every time I have somebody available, I send them a text and I actually take a snapshot. So it's on my phone. So uh, again, so I I'm doing my end of the bargain. Uh, so it is what it is at this point. So keep on them. Uh, and if they call me for one, I don't have a problem sending somebody if somebody is available or B, as soon as someone is, I'll be more than happy to send them over there. Thank um, you. 
Thank you, Gary, um, for that update. Uh, really helpful. Would you mind any, um, maybe like the text messages that you've, the messages that you've sent him that have gone and answered, would you mind maybe sharing those with me, please? No, I'm not. Uh, thank you, though. I'm not going to share them. We just, because I don't we, think it's something I should be sending. Okay. Well, we, what we want to, um, because they did indicate that they had reached out to you, but if you're telling us that that has not happened, um, then we uh, they sent me a text and sent me together. an email that maybe I missed. But like okay. I said, I really has he hasn't gone out of his way to say, oh, no, well, let me rephrase that. So the other day I said, there's a kid, one of the kids that, as soon as that other kid quit, his buddy got him on another first year apprentices. He asked me if he was a Springfield resident. I said, no, we've had conversations about it, but he hasn't straight up asked me for a Springfield resident because even another kid uh, went there the other day to get solicited on. I said, he's a great hand. Don't know if you want to use him. Uh, he did ask me, so there has been conversations about residents. That could be his interpretation of I asked Fiori. Uh, so, yeah, he asked me if they were, and I told him, no, they weren't. So, But he hasn't flat out asked. I will look through the list, and I will send him a text later on by the end of today saying, here's who I got. Do you, uh, are you looking for them if I have one available? Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. But basically, yep. so my my reason for asking is that, you know, if we do have to get to a point where we need to have corrective action meetings, we need to make sure that we have all of our, you know, um, our backup for all the actions that we that we're taking. Uh, yep. So just so yeah. So just so you know, we might be reaching out to you to participate in those as well. Um, just so you know. I don't, like I said, they, it's always been said when you put three people in a room. The person who supplies, the person who says they can't get them, and you're going to hear two different sides of the story always. So, yeah, they always hear one side. It's not ever going to be the same as the other person. Well, that's she's for just sure. Try, she's just trying to get clarity because yeah. they're saying they contacted you and right. you're saying they didn't. So she's just trying to gain clarity as far as documenting the process. Yeah, I get it. But the problem is, don't forget, I mean... I'll consult my lawyer, but I'm not sending, I'm not authorized to send any documentation to anybody just out of the blue. So uh, I don't think anybody would send documentation out of the blue. So I don't have a problem sending it if I get a lawyer that says I can send it. So again, if they ask me for a letter, I will definitely not send the letter saying they asked me or we don't, Ironworkers Local 7 does not send letters. Uh, if you ask somebody, we will usually fill it or make the effort to fill it. So again, yeah, but, well, I'm, I'm just saying there, there was miscommunication yep. the first time on Brightwood Lincoln where they weren't apprised that they had to have residents and then they didn't say it and they said it. And you remember this, right? You remember this yeah, conversation? I was at the very Lincoln. tail end. And you, right, you, when you, we you had remember the, the resident meeting. situation from Brightwood Lincoln yeah. with Margate where you had. Yeah, there was call. almost a slim to none. They At the very end, you guys had a corrective action. I was brought into the meeting, and the very next well, morning, it was a, very a woman was, and a minority. Was the beginning. So, it was at the beginning, just like it's at the beginning right now. It wasn't at the that one was at the, the end beginning, of it. like we're at the beginning right now, trying to get it corrected. Okay, so, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying this is, becoming a pa this is becoming a pattern with Norgate. We're, we're far, at differences, as far as but yes, are concerned, And this is a pattern of miscommunication with Norgate, as far as residents are concerned. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so definitely get on Norgate. Tell them they need to realize that this isn't, that this is the expectation. So again, uh, you're asking me to supply them members. I will supply them members. Uh, and I've been making efforts to give them members. I said, I'm the one that got the two Springfield residents there. Okay. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Ken, did you want to jump in here? You had, a, I think I saw your hand up a few minutes ago. Did you have a question? You're on mute, Tim. All right, first thing is, thank you, Melvin. I'm in my car and I'm in a bad zone right now. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Right. We, we, we. Great. So, I said two questions. You're breaking up a little bit. You, you want to hold off until you, as you move a little further down and try again? I'm in a bad zone. Uh, I'll be uh, try me. Uh, 
Let me come back to you, Tim. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Try. Just get keep Five driving, pay attention to the. Or so. Yeah, I'll, wait, I'll give you a couple minutes to get in. As you move along, you may be able to move out of that zone. Um, just uh, and yeah. to fill it in. Um, that sounded pretty good. Try, try it again. No. Okay. Uh, Fiori, Liz Che. Uh, that exchange to me sounded like, <clears throat> I understand what Fiori is saying about the sharing of information, but I think... Um, and what, what it really just comes down to, I'm not going to question whether or not it's appropriate to send an email, but just as long as we're all on the same page, we, if we're going to at some point ask the general contractor to hold somebody accountable, then we have to recognize that uh, I think it really is about, um, it's the ability to document. Um, it really comes down to the ability for us all to be able to document what is actually going on when it comes to the point where we're holding up somebody accountable. So regardless of whether text, whether it's text, emails, or whatever, but the communications, what I think is going to, what is being asked is, is that at some point, uh, it may be, whether it's through a letter, a conversation, a meeting, or whatever, but we're all on the same page as to documenting because if one person, if it's a three-way conversation and it's always two people, then yes, then somebody can always say, well, I asked Fiori or Fiori said this, or Liz said this, Chase said that. But until we get all three people in a room to confirm what was actually said and, and be able to document um, date, time of conversation and communications, then um, you know it's, it's always hearsay until ink hits paper. And once ink hits paper, then it becomes evidentiary. So, um, you know, we just, just be everybody be conscious. We're all trying to do the same thing and we'll not allow or put ourselves in a position where a contractor who is not compliant is playing games of talking to one person and saying something that they feel satisfies that person for the, and not repeating the same thing to anybody else to be able to document it in a, an environment that makes it, um, Incredible. So just as long as we know we're all working in the same direction. And, and uh, just, just, I just wanted to add to that because this is their second time on our second project with miscommunication um, with the same company. So, it, so th th there's just an additive to that. Well, that's what I picked up on from you is, is this is not the first time that they not their first rodeo. Not well, it's not even just a contract. I mean, doing the work, but it seems like this is, uh, you know, when you when you when it's a communication problem on the second project with the same company who's having a problem, that to me sounds more like, uh, you know, uh, intentional, and just a way of um, avoidance. So, just as long as we all understand that that's the case, and at one point this is going, we can't challenge Liz and her company. Uh, for not holding them accountable if we can't actually cooperate with what she needs. But um, it may not need to be an exchange of emails. It just means, may need to be able to confirm that Fiore wasn't communicated with directly or that he fact was to help. That is a benefit to the, you know, to the res resolution of the problem as well. Um, Tim, are you in a better position to speak now? I got to get going, people. Thank you, Liz. You can take over from here. <laughs> Sorry for leaving you. Okay. I gotta See you. Yeah. Okay, when <laughs> you go to you. camp, I really appreciate it. I know that there's a lot of things going on and you've got a lot on your plate. I would like to talk to you about stuff offline just so that I have some clarity about how to do outreach, what the protocols for communication on, uh, not just the REO, but other things that are involving money in the city and projects that are going on. Um, and I'll keep things in confidence if it needs to be, but we do need to have a conversation if, if you sure. can please sure. me in. I'll give thank you a call. And Liz, thank you for everything. Uh, you want to, I'm, if I can get to attempt to jump in, Chase leaving, I think Liz, you probably can handle everything from this point on his part of it. Um, Tim, are you all ready to speak to us now? No. Mm, no. Okay. No, but I think I'm in a better, better place now. Can you hear me now? You're coming in a little broken up, but it's better than it was before. I'm moving towards a better place. 
Okay, you're, you're oh, sounding better. Go ahead. Let's see if we can go. go ahead. So, wait. so my questions were, um, one is... Who is... We're not getting into... Let's try it again, Tim, from the beginning. Almost out of the bad zone. I got like, all right. I'm almost out of the bad zone. I got another another minute. Um, um, Norgate. Who is Norgate exactly? Liz. So Norgate. So we. So the contract, the steel um, package, was uh, signed with Norgate, but Stellar they have the erectors. So that's why. So there is. So they're a they're, sub. Yes, the Stellar's. They're yeah. a fabricator, Tim. Sorry to jump over you. They're a fabricator. They fabricated the steel and made the steel. And then in turn, they hire an erector to come perform the work, Tim. Okay, thanks, Fiori. Uh, and so so if we're, if we're having trouble with Norgate and we had trouble with them on the last job, isn't it the, isn't it the job of the general contractor to deal with them? Correct. Yes. So that's what we're, so that's, that was Tim, that's the conversation that's happening. So we have sent out, so we met with, with them prior to them coming and this is stellar, um, but also Pierre from Norgate was part of those conversations. Um, and we made it really clear what the expectations were. Um, when we received their first, uh, this was for November uh, monthly report, they were under on those two categories. So as, um, is we told them the plan is if they're not, you know, meeting the requirements, they're going to get a non-compliance letter, and then they have to let us know, you know, what actions they've taken. Um, they did send send something back to us within a, it was hours, which is great. Um, but the so when when I was giving my update from what we got back from uh, from Stellar, they indicated that they've been in touch with. Uh, Fury regularly, um, but what he's telling us is that he hasn't heard from them, at least them asking for Springfield residents in particular. And so that's that's why I was saying like it would be great to you know to have a handle on um, to get a little bit more clarity on what some of those conversations have been. So when we're sitting down with um, Stellar for a corrective action uh, meeting, you know if it gets there, we have all the information, so it's not you know, like, you know, we're, we're saying something without a backup, um, which is why I said, you know, if that does end up being um, the case, we'll probably call in Fury at, at that meeting as well. So then that way, this, you know, we can at least minimize, you know, some of the exchange that has happened here. Um, so everybody's right. on the same page. We're just trying to get right. on the same page. All right. So that, that's a good update. Could you just Identify yourself because I'm recognizing Oh, yeah, voice sorry. <laughs> yep, sorry. It's uh, Liz Webb from Fontaine. From Fontaine, okay. Yes, yes. So, my last, so thank you, Liz. And my last question is, at least for now, is uh, um, do we have someone here from procurement in this meeting? No, Che had to leave. He was here. <laughs> Who is seven three zero one zero? Maureen. Yeah, so we don't. Uh, is it something made by Liz? Someone from, from so so if you know, if you could just clarify that there's Jay. You're breaking up again, Tim. But if you're pro there is nobody here. Compliance or. There's nobody here from procurement. Che was on the meeting, but he had to leave early during the time that you were having communications problems. And if you can hear me, we can't hear you and your video is out again. Yeah, okay. Does Che represent compliance? Yeah, I'm right on 91 downtown Springfield, so sorry. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, so Che is from our compliance unit. He's the only... Uh, employee from our compliance unit right now since hope has moved to procurement um so i'm the only one here right now okay i just want to, i you know we used to have theo and i'm just wondering 
who's representing comp uh, procurement since Theo's not here. Yeah, well, That's Theo was actually uh, representing the law department, not procurement, um, but we haven't had another attorney assigned to the REO yet. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, anybody else got any more on this issue? Uh, if not, I'm going to move ask Lindsay for the next general item. But Liz, thank you. I greatly appreciate what you're trying to do. And uh, if I can be of some assistance helping to facilitate something moving forward, just let me know. And uh, if we need somebody else from the law department procurement or some clarity from uh, in regards to certain things, just let me know. I'll try to help to do that as well. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Melvin. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Lindsay, you have the agenda, correct? Could you tell me what the next item is? Would be the year to date? Yes. So um, I don't know. Have we satisfied the review of year to date projects? I think they said the only one was the Homer DeBerry, and we've satisfied that discussion, right? Yes, I believe so. And as far as the, I guess, the uh, Brightwood is, we've already discussed that. So there's not, there's not, sounds like we don't have a lot. I, I guess moving forward, we probably in going into the new year with the investment in money. Uh, I don't know if any big projects are going on, but we can, we'll tackle that as we go forward. So is there any other questions related to what has happened and transpired in 2021 related to the REO? And I, I'm gonna open that up to um, our guests as well, just for the purpose of efficiency and utilization of the time. Um, representative, um, from the Carpenters, uh, you have a comment, a question relating to what happened in 21 is, uh, and if not, is everybody pretty much comfortable with what we were able to accomplish and uh, any comments about how moving forward, I guess would be the next issue. I, I guess I would just say um, that I, uh, and so Tim, this is Lisa Clausen from the Carpenters. Um, uh, I just appreciate that the, um, uh, REO committee is having these regular reports from the general contractor. And um, I think it's very helpful to um, be seeing the report and the numbers each uh, month and um, have a chance to review them. So I, I think it's helpful on, you know, early on being able to get on track with different contractors. So I appreciate the good job Fontaine is doing and, um, and the, this work the committee is doing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Lindsay, I, I mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Early first quarter of next year, are there any projects in the pipeline or is this only one we're going to be focused on moving forward for quite a while? I can't think of any off the top of my head. That's not to say there is none. Um, I'm just trying to think of what potentially... We actually don't have a ton of MSBA projects in the... Um, Q right now. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. There's nothing I can think of right now off the top of my head, but um, if I think of anything, I'll put a list together for the next meeting. Actually, I, yeah, if you, if you would be so kind, your communication within the administration might be a little easier than what we are from the outside coming in. Uh, if they could give us an update, um, whenever we decide to schedule the next meeting. Um, and, uh, and if it, I mean, I guess the next question is, is moving forward. We, we've been piecemealing the schedule. We're down. It's not like we have multiple, multiple projects. It seems like we only have one major project going on right now. I wanted to hear the board's uh, thoughts from my understanding is the REL will committee will be reappointed in January, but I don't know who's going to get what position or whether or not I'll continue or not. That'll be at the discretion of the president. Um, but the work will continue. And I'm really impressed with what Fontaine is trying to get done uh, and the effort they seem to be putting into it. Uh, but I don't know what's coming down the pike. So I guess whenever we have our next meeting, it would be nice to know from procurement what we can anticipate, what the blueprint is for uh, the next GC, for the next project that might be coming and what they would be coming to the table. Will they echo the same blueprint that we're hearing from Fontaine or will we have, will Che or somebody have be charged with trying to get them on 
on point and uh, to the same degree that Fontaine presently is. And uh, so that's that's what I'd like to know and plan on hearing in the future uh, is making sure that, I mean, obviously I don't expect Fontaine to be training the next general contractor that they may be competing with a job for, but this, on the city side, uh, are we prepared for the next big project to have what we need sure. uh, onset of what needs to be presented to them in expectation? You know, uh, Melvin, if I could just say a few things, you know, this is this is an area which, you know, I think is, you know, from the perspectives of CMs and GCs, like, this is an area where I don't see any competition, right? Because if we don't do this together, then it doesn't, you know, no one will be successful, right? So I think we have a real opportunity to like bring, you know, all the general contractors and construction management folks um, together and for a plug, I actually called Frank Amaro um, from O'Connell, right, to like get, you know, his advice and, you know, just, you know, take the temperature to see if we're doing the right things. And he is incredibly um, helpful. So this is, I think you're seeing you're also bringing together uh, GCs and CMs in a really special way to, to develop the workforce of the future. So thank you. Refreshing to hear, and I greatly appreciate that. That cooperative attitude is exactly what will be beneficial in the long term. Um, you know, everybody just needs to do their job and do it well. And, uh, I, and, and the thing is, with us, not just Jesus, us, but it's also, you know, procurement is a lot of part. And if we all could just kind of keep rolling in the same direction and, and our representatives in, in labor, uh, you know, they've They've been with us from the start. They've been our partners in this and uh, they may not, you know, so I appreciate everybody's help. Uh, moving forward, are there any other questions related to that part of it before I just kind of jump in and try to wrap us up? I believe Tim and I have another one at three o'clock. I don't know if Tim is going to attend, but uh, the audit committee, so. Um, I'm on that committee. Okay, then uh, we'll see you in 15. Um, Next year, moving forward, do we need to suggestions as to when we will schedule the next meeting? Do we should we put it in um, uh, plan on a monthly meeting? Is that what we really need to have happening with this project? I don't know what else is out there. So until I know what's out there, I, didn't, I mean, if we were having a lot of projects, then I certainly would have be more confident in trying to figure out the, the urgency of having the next meeting. Um, somebody tell me something. Thoughts? I throw it out to everybody, please. I, I think it's still good to have a monthly meeting until we determine that. Uh, obviously, there's not that much to talk about, but but and Lindsay said she would give us a report on the projects, look out a little bit. I think that would be good to meet in January if we can. Okay. And, and scope that out and see what our expectations. Also, see if we're going to have someone from the law department or we can have someone from procurement. Um, you know, if we're not all in this there's a couple of areas that aren't represented as far as i can tell and um they should be everybody in agreement so maybe a meeting say late january um uh, i know it usually takes about a week to 10 days into the new year before the committee assignments are usually um, appointed don't and the calendar comes out as to you know the business of the council itself so does the last week of january sound appropriate to most people yeah, the Tuesday, the 25th, 25th. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Two o'clock. Does that work for everybody? I mean, you know, initially, at least. Um, and I have a, a request to make um, to all of you and to all the people of the council or the committee. Uh, Maureen here does an outstanding or the best job she can do. Um, and with the resources that we've, you know, that's been afforded her to get this together for us. Uh, too often, it seems like she's calling last minute to try to get agenda items and get RSVPs. Uh, let's not make her job any harder than it is uh, because she's actually trying to do her regular assigned duties and then taking and doing this as well. I don't know. I mean, I didn't, I don't know what her, you know, I just, it just thing is, and we should never, we should always be respectful of everybody's time and including hers. Thank so um, I appreciate that. Um, so everybody, uh, when she's, if you have an agenda item, you don't have to wait to the last minute to ask for it to be included. Um, 
if you send it to me, then I'll make sure that she gets it in appropriate time as long as I get it you know, in early enough. But when she sends out the RSPs, if we could respond as soon as possible, number one. Number two, she quite often will send out an email asking for agenda items. Um, and sometimes I'm struggling just to put something together because I'm not, or she's not hearing from anybody else. Uh, and if there's any communication problems in terms of emails and stuff, uh, we'll, we'll work on that too to make sure that there's a clear channel uh, for information flow back and forth. Uh, does that sound appropriate to everyone? Yes, it does. Okay, thank you. And um, Lindsay, uh, one request or thought um, because of your relationship with TJ uh, and others, um, should we... Uh, we let with membership. I think we are actually down two people generally from where we started years ago when, when Tim and I first got into the council and our representatives, our guests, along with Fiori. Um, and one of them never was repeated. And I don't believe Pat Sullivan has attended a meeting in 21 at all. Um, so I uh, just maybe you could talk to somebody about the possibility if, if, um, Pat's not available, and, and that's going to be an issue going forward. Um, whether you know, and, and then there was somebody else that was there before him that left. We had a seat that kept being vacant, so we're really down two members, and they're both. Whose who spot did I fill? It's been so long that we've been operating. I can't exactly say, but I believe. We had a problem with appointees. These are all administration appointees, and we had a problem getting them all filled for quite a while. So, I mean, I'm trying to. Tim, do you remember? Or Fiori, actually, Fiori was here before Tim. Do you? Am, am I off base, Tim? I mean, a Fiori would, you know, be us being down a couple of people. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, technically, I'm thinking we're we're really down. Yeah, I mean, we've always been down people. My God, are you kidding me? It's just, it's never been filled. We've never had capacity in a long, long time. Let's put it that way. Yeah, so I I, I don't remember exactly who replaced Lindsay, but even be, back before Tim was on the committee, we had a gentleman who was supposed to be there. I think he showed up like two meetings. We went a couple of years or uh, two or three years trying to get somebody else on. Eventually somebody else came on. They attended a couple of meetings and then they didn't show anymore. Uh, and then of course, entire firms of attorneys. I don't even remember all the names of the attorneys and procurement people long before we knew who Lindsay Hackett was, no offense. Uh, certainly long before Che even came in aboard, before Hope Button was hired. Um, you know, you know, the thing is, is me and Fiori, uh, we go all the way back to 2000, this January, 2010, uh, with this committee and, um, even had yeah. a hard time getting Maureen to then to step up and give us Maureen. Remember? Yes. We had no well, secretaries for the longest time either. <laughs> yeah. When we, when we first started, Bob Arteri, when we first started, Bob Arteri and the city council staff were balking at the extra duty of taking us on to do the work. So, I mean, we've been, it's, it goes back that far in terms of even just getting somebody who could be our, our secretary. And then we had the young lady, um, I can't think of her name, but she married somebody in uh, Oak. Nikki, in the, um, that, that Nick, was Nikki Ro yeah. Roney. Nikki Roney, yes, thank you. So yeah, we we just we've struggled to maintain, and the thing is, it's not a voluminous amount of work here, um, but we do. Uh, it would make it easier to get quorum if we had more people. But so, right, right, Tim. Or, all right, uh, yeah, we. I. I'll talk to you offline about that, Mel. Okay, okay. and I, mean, I, I have, hey guys, I saw an email from Patrick. I thought Patrick wasn't even on the board. It's been so long since we heard from him. To be honest with you, well, Pat, I'm, I, Pat's had some issues, fan personal issues to deal with, and you know, yeah, I no, I know that. that. That's yeah. but yeah, no, but he hasn't. Saying, been, I thought he was off the board. I thought he was. As we're saying, it's been so long. So you know, I, I actually thought he had stepped down at one time. That's what I'm trying to say. No big well, deal, you know. 
I think I, I, I just know that I know he responded to today's meeting that he couldn't attend. So obviously, um, but the point is, is that um, whether he is or not, it's just the, uh, we just, just so that, that TJ or somebody in the administration knows that we're running short and it's not a voluminous amount of work, but we, you know, it would certainly make it easier when people can't be here for us to establish the quorum and keep, get the business done so that we're not wasting anybody's time. And that being said, and, uh, do our guests or anybody else have anything they want to say, interject, or offer before I kind of, you know, bid adieu to everyone? No, I'm all set, Melvin. I think I, I got I actually have to leave in a minute, so um, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm all set. Okay. Anybody else have a comment, question, complaint, observation? All set, guys. Have a great day. Okay, then, everybody, please uh, be safe. And I probably won't speak or hear from many of you before the new year. So everybody, be, have a blessed holiday. Uh, stay healthy above all things and enjoy every day because tomorrow's not promised to any of us. Look forward. It's been a pleasure and honor to work with you all. And please continue to teach me more about this, uh, this issue of construction trades. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.